Hello, everybody. Coach Larry coming at you live from the pool tonight. I hope everybody has had a great weekend. I know several swimmers out there have had meets this weekend, so hope everything went really well. You got to practice your strategies. You got to practice your anticipation going into your walls, and you got to put some of your goals into place. Okay. Hopefully, you've achieved some of your goals. So. Let's get started tonight, but before, actually before we get in too deep, I want to give a quick shout out to the swimmers who did one-to-one -one sessions this weekend. We had really, really good and productive sessions. So uh, I want to shout out to Kylie and Anna and Maddie, as well as four new swimmers who just took their first one-to-one -one sessions this weekend. So welcome and great job to Sophie and Juliet and McKenna and Tyler. So really good weekend all the way around. We worked on a lot of really cool stuff. We worked on all four strokes, turns, underwaters, and one of the one of the things we worked on quite a bit was leverage, which is the title of tonight's one-to-one, -one, Sunday night one-to-one -one leverage. It makes all the difference and it really does. Now, um, before we get too deep, I want to just encourage you if you um, if you had a meet this weekend, review your goals. How are you doing in relation to your goals? If you didn't have a meet this weekend, review your goals. Because here we are, we're almost at the beginning of February, coming up this week. And a lot of times people, by the time they reach February, they kind of have put their goals aside and they're like, um, oh yeah, goals, I forgot about that. Goals are not just for January, guys. It's not just a New Year's resolution. It's a daily routine. It should be part of your daily life. Review your goals, rewrite your goals, talk with your coach about your goals. Goals should be something that you absorb, not just something that you write down once and put aside. Because if you put them aside, they probably will not come to be. But if you absorb them, kind of like that Billy Joel song I told you about several Facebook Lives ago where I, I heard that song that I haven't heard by Billy Joel called Moving Out. I heard it for the first time in 40 years and I knew every word of that song. Why? Because when I was a little kid, I had, I had heard it enough uh, on the radio, I had, I had the album, I'm sure, and it just became part, it just became ingrained in here and that's what you want your goals to be. You want to be so familiar with your goals that they're just part of you uh, and you start living them out every day, okay? Um, of course, you will encounter a, um, obstacles so be ready to jump hurdles if you're serious about goal planning and goal setting and goal achievement you're gonna have hurdles but hurdles are meant to be jumped and you can jump them because other people have jumped them before you and so you can jump them now so hang tight all right oh by the way speaking of goals um, I'm not sure how many of you watched the Australian Open finals today they actually it actually started at 3 a.m. But it finished up around 7.30 or 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time this morning. Roger Federer won his 18th Grand Slam victory. 18 Grand Slams, the most of, out of anybody in history. Really class act, and just a really cool guy. But here's what I wanted to point out, and this will be an encouragement to those of you who have big goals, and sometimes you run into struggles and you run into challenges. Roger Federer, the last time he won a Grand Slam match, was in 2012, in July 2012, at Wimbledon. That's, that's almost five years ago, guys. That's five years without a Grand Slam title. So, and, and I know so many people thought, maybe this guy's done. You know, maybe he's washed up. In fact, that might have even crossed his own mind. Maybe I'm done, maybe I'm too old, I'm in my 30s now, and these young guns are coming up, and uh, maybe I've passed my prime. But you know what? He kept going. He encountered injuries. In fact, he had a pretty bad knee injury recently. He didn't play any tournaments over the past six months until he got to the Australian Open. And what happened? He won. And he had to fight Rafa Nadal, one of the greatest tennis players of all time. And he won the match. And it was, it was just really cool. And it was really cool to see both of these guys give their um, speeches after, after the match. But I want to encourage you guys, don't give up. Keep going. Even if, even if the hurdle in front of you seems insurmountable, keep 
jumping. You may trip, you may fall, get up, dust yourself off, keep going. You can do it, okay? Others have done it before you, there's no reason why you can't. Got it? Good, okay, let's talk about leverage. Now, um, here's, the, here's the definition of leverage, and, and like the title says, leverage, it makes all the difference. Um, okay, the, the definition, there are several definitions, but the main definition as it relates to us is this. Leverage is the increase in force gained by using a lever. Okay, say that again. Leverage is an increase in force gained by using a lever. Now, isn't that what we want in swimming? We want to increase our force in swimming because we want to go faster, right? We want to create force, create momentum, create power to go in the direction that we want to go. So we need to use our levers. Now, we have several levers, but the main ones that we're going to be working on tonight are right here, the arms. Okay, the arms are kind of your main lever, one of your main levers in swimming. So let me give you, I want to give you two examples of, of leverage to help you understand where we're going. And then we're just going to talk real briefly about how to properly use leverage in all four strokes. All right, here we go. Behold the can of paint and behold the lever. This is my screwdriver. And if you've ever opened a can of paint before, you know that you can't just walk up to it and screw off the top. It's not just something you can kind of pry your fingernails under and, go, and pull it off, okay? It's sealed on there really tight. So you need some help. You need some help to lift the top, to pry the top off the top of the can. And that's why we use the lever. We use a screwdriver. Now we can't just use the lever any old way. Having a lever and, and using it just in any old ways, that's not enough. You've got to know how to use it properly because you could start stabbing the can. And uh, by the way, uh, shout out to my friend, my good friend Steve for the can of paint. Thanks for the prop, Steve. I won't ruin your can of paint. But we can't just stab the can, okay? We can't try to poke a hole in the side of the can. We can't like, like try to scrape a hole in the can. No, you've got to use your lever properly. You've got to wedge it just right into the side of the lid and then you have to pry. You have to press down on your lever and that's gonna create force, okay, which is going to give you your end result, which is the top's gonna to come off the paint. So you use the lever in the right way to create force to accomplish your goal. Sound like swimming, right? We wanna use our levers to create force to achieve our goals. Let me give you one more quick example before we talk about the different strokes. For those of you swimmers out there, every time you press yourself out of the pool, because swimmers, we're not gonna use the ladder, right? We're gonna, we're gonna get out like an athlete. You're gonna put your, uh, well, unless, unless of course you're injured, but we're gonna get out like an athlete. We're gonna put, you're gonna put your hands on the side of the pool and you're gonna press yourself out, okay? Now, what you're doing is you're using the levers of your arms and you're gonna press against a solid force, which is the side of the pool, and you're gonna press yourself up and out of the pool, which is your goal. Now, you can't just willy-nilly use these levers any way you want, right? Because if you, if you keep your arms straight and you try to get out of the pool by pushing with your arms straight, you're not gonna be getting out of the pool anytime soon. Also, if you put your hands out really wide like this and you try to get out of the pool with your hands way out here, you're probably not gonna get out of the pool either because there's, there's not enough leverage. You're using your levers, but you're not using them properly. Okay, so again, it's not enough just to have levers. We've gotta use them properly. So what do you do naturally? Well, you put your hands and your arms right about shoulder width, maybe just outside shoulder width. You get some bend in your elbow and boom, out you go. And that's how you use your levers properly. And that's what we want to do in swimming, okay? In swimming, we want to use these levers of our arms properly so that we can create force and send ourselves in the direction we want to go. Because remember, I know this may sound overly simple, but here's the deal. In the sport of swimming, we want to go from point A to point B as quickly and efficiently as possible, right? 
Right, so we want to cut through the water with maximum efficiency and we want to create as much force as we can to send our body in that direction. We need to use levers, okay? We need to use our levers, not the screwdriver, but one of our most important levers is our arms to, to create the force to send us in the right direction. Now swimmers, you need to ask your coaches at practice, am I getting leverage in my strokes? Okay, because your coach will know. Your coach will know whether or not you're doing a good job of getting leverage. But in the meantime, here are a couple of tips on each stroke on how to use your levers properly. And really I'm taking this from some of the common mistakes that I see from swimmers. Okay, so let's talk about freestyle and backstroke first. Okay, freestyle and backstroke. Now, one of, one of the um, main errors that I see in freestyle, okay, is I see swimmers swimming really flat. Okay, they're just, they're using their arms, they're using their levers, but they're not using them properly. Why? Because they're, they're keeping their body flat in the water and they're just, they're not getting the, the enough force on the lever, okay? If you don't get enough force on the lever, okay, you're not gonna be able to lift the top off the can. If you don't get enough force in your pull on this lever, you're not gonna go as fast as you wanna go. So we can't swim flat, okay? We, we don't wanna keep the torso flat. We want to what? Rotate, because when you're in this position here and you press on the lever, it's gonna be much more powerful than if you keep your body flat. Just think about when you try to push something down, on, like something that's on your counter, like maybe a top onto a bottle, and you wanna push it down, you don't push it down like this. You kind of you kind of turn your body a little bit and you press and you get a little bend in your arm. Okay? So, we want to rotate. So, first error is no rotation. We want to rotate. The other error is sometimes sometimes swimmers pull with a totally straight arm. Now, I know there are some world-class swimmers in the 50 free who do have very straight arms, and if that's you, more power to you. But for, the, for most of us, for most of us, we need to have a little bend in the arm, okay? If we're not swimming the 50 free and we're not in the Olympics, we're gonna put, we're gonna put a little bend in the arm as we put pressure on the lever, okay? So, in other words, you kinda wanna pretend like there's a, almost pretend like there's a beach ball that's just under the surface of the water and you're gonna wrap your arm over that beach ball and then press it through your hip. Okay, so we're gonna rotate, we're gonna get a little bend in the arm, okay, and we're gonna press it through the hip. Okay, now, um, the other thing, the other thing that we see is um, that if, um, if your core is too loose, okay, if you're not holding your core really solid, you can end up being really wiggly and the lever is not going to work very well. So. Let's just say if this, if this can were kind of made out of um, like a spongy material, if this was a sponge and you were trying to, trying to use the lever with it, it wouldn't work very well. You need to have a solid, you need to have a solid source to pry the lever against. Voila, your core, okay? You want to have a solid, solid lever here to press against and turn as you're pulling, okay? Of course, you're pressing against the water, but we want to turn the core and have a really solid core, not, not a loose core, so that we get some really good power. All right, so that's freestyle. Backstroke, very, very similar. One of the things I see often in backstroke is lack of rotation. Swimmers swimming, just staying on their back, and no rotation. Well, same, that's the same as freestyle. What do you have to do? You have to rotate the shoulder to get good leverage so that we can get good power and get and create that force to send us in the direction that we want to go okay so we're not going to swim flat backstroke we're going to get a nice rotation we're going to get a little bit of bend in the arm because that's the other thing that i see a lot of swimmers who swim and they pull with a straight arm okay there's not a lot of power in a straight arm okay imagine again like you're getting out of the pool if you try to get out of the pool with straight arms not going to happen. You got to get a little bend in your arms. So think about uh, think about your butt, putting your arm around your buddy. Kind of call this a buddy catch. 
okay? A nice tall buddy. You're gonna put your arm around your buddy, a little curve in the arm, and then press and rotate all the way through. So we wanna make sure we're rotated with a good solid core, rotating and getting a little bit of bend so we get leverage. Again, this is all about getting leverage in the water. It's not enough just to have arms. You gotta use your arms and your core correctly. So that's freestyle and backstroke. Now, let's talk about butterfly and breaststroke, okay? Butterfly and breaststroke are very, very similar to each other. One of the big errors that I see in butterfly in terms of leverage is, I see a lot of swimmers, they might land here in the 11 position, but then they sweep way out to this Y position. And that makes it really hard to get leverage, okay? If you're gonna try to get power out here, you're not gonna get much, okay? Just like if you try to get out of the pool, with your arms way out here on the, on the side of the pool. You're not gonna be getting out of the pool very well, okay? That power position is just outside the shoulders, okay? So you'll land here in the 11 position, sweep out slightly just outside the shoulder, boom! That's your power position, not out here. So swimmers, ask your coach, am I pulling out here in the Y position or am I closer to the 11 position? Because we wanna get power in that 11 position. The other thing that swimmers often do is they'll often drop the elbows, okay? They'll drop the elbows and they'll slide, they'll like land, drop the elbows and slide the arms, the elbows back during their, um, during their pull. Well, guess what? That's just like sliding your arms across a table. You're not doing anything except kind of polishing the table. We wanna get those elbows up, okay? A little bit of bend in the elbow, fingertips down. So you can drive, okay? Drive yourself forward instead of just sliding. It's a lot easier to slide though because it's, it's easier on the muscles because you're really not moving any water. So let's get just outside of that 11 position. Let's make sure the elbows are nice and high so we get what? Leverage, we have gotta get that leverage guys just like when you're getting out of the pool, okay? So nice high elbows. And then of course we, all, we want to drive the hands toward the hips and we want to drive the hips toward the hands. That's where we're going to get some really good power in butterfly. It's not just about your levers being in the right position. It's about driving these levers toward your hips and your hips toward your hands. And that's that body whip. That's the pop and power in your butterfly. Got it? Okay. Finally, let's talk about breaststroke. Breaststroke, we... Um, one of the major problems of breaststroke is deep breaststroke, where people start sludging down here in, in the depths of the pool, and it's just, they drop their elbows, and they lose all sorts of leverage, because, um, because there's not a lot of leverage down here. The leverage is up nice and close to the surface in breaststroke. Remember we did a, um, a Facebook Live uh, broadcast several weeks ago about breaststroke, and, and, and how to be a surfacey breaststroker. Okay, we want to have, we want it to be very close to the surface and when you go for your catch, okay, when you go for your catch right here, we don't want to drop elbows, but that's most of the time what I see, a major error, is people opening up, opening up the stroke, like opening up an elevator, and they drop the elbows and they get real deep and it's just, there's no leverage there. And remember, if there's no, or there's very little leverage, if there's very little leverage, there's gonna be very little force. So we've gotta create force. So when you do your breaststroke, open the elevator, go around the corners like you're scraping the edge of a bowl and keep those elbows nice and close to the surface with vertical forearms, okay? We don't wanna do this, okay? This is called polishing a table, which is, uh, you know, it has some value, but not any value in swimming. Okay, we wanna grab hold and then drive the hips toward the hands, so, okay? So we wanna get leverage. Again, out, around, elbows right, nice and close to the surface and then sweep everything together and out in front, okay? That's how we create leverage. Nice and close to the surface, vertical forearms instead of horizontal forearms, and then we drive the hips toward the hands, boom! And then we drive into the front part of the stroke. So that's leverage. Freestyle and backstroke, okay? We wanna get good rotation, okay? We wanna get a little bit of bend in the arm and we want a really nice solid core. 
butterfly. We want to make sure we're not swimming out here in the Y position. We want to be just outside the 11 with a little bit of uh, nice high elbows and drive the hands toward the hips and the hips toward the hands. And then breaststroke, nice up close to the surface. Surfacey breaststroke. Open the elevator, get those elbows nice and high, keep everything close to the surface for leverage and drive those hips forward and you will create force just like you do when you try to open the paint can with your lever. This is where force is created and you need to create that force in your swimming. Again, swimmers, ask your coach, how am I doing on my leverage? Are my arms doing the right thing? It's not, it's not enough just to have arms. You got to have the arms doing the right thing. Okay? Awesome. If you have any questions, guys, you can always post them after, uh, after, the, um, after we're done here tonight. So if you have any questions, fire away. You can visit our website at iswim121.com. And we've got all sorts of resources there. And you can also email in questions. Um, oh, and by the way, next week, no Sunday night one-to-one -one because it's Super Bowl Sunday. So I will be otherwise occupied uh, watching the Super Bowl. I'm sure you will be too, but we may do something during the week instead. Uh, but next Sunday night, we're gonna, it's going to be Super, Super Bowl Sunday night, so no, uh, no live. Let me just leave you with this. Swimmers, review your goals. Live your goals. If you encounter, if you encounter, excuse me, not if, when you encounter those hurdles, those challenges, jump them. Don't shy away from them, okay? I want to encourage you this week, uh, renew your excitement about your goals. Um, post them on your bathroom mirror on a, on a sticky note. Write them out daily. Tell your coach about them. Tell your parents about them. Tell your friends about them. The more you start living your goals, the more they will start becoming a part of your expectation. Um, you know, I, I can't tell you enough how many times I've seen these guys uh, and guys and w both women and men in sports, they get on TV and they get interviewed and they're not being, they're not being uh, conceited, but they say, yeah, I, I expected to make that shot. I expected to win that game. Um, so you should expect to achieve your goals. Why not? If other people have achieved those goals, you can too, okay? So go for it. All right, have a great week. Review your goals, jump those hurdles when they come, and remember, work on your leverage. That's how you're gonna get power and force. All right, guys, have a great night. Thanks for joining us, everybody, and um, we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye-bye.